Good afternoon and welcome. Let's take a look at our first story. India's first multi-regional culture festival, Art, is back with its second edition. The festival has begun at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi. Art is a cultural celebration with, which focuses on literature, culture, society, music, traditions, history and art. Let's cut to the panel on the pain of separation, the pain of partition not made clear where will it go it was only announced on that day so a lot of decisions which were which looked to us as fairly arbitrary were taken indeed if you go to the museum you will see they were taken actually uh, makranji in an arbitrary fashion uh, cyril ratliff uh, was interviewed many years later by kuldeep nair and he said that when he went to meet him and this interview is in our a museum and he was the architect as you can see of the partition at that time he was the one who drew the boundary lines and he said mujhe purane you know he was given old maps he was not given the actual uh, census reports the latest ones he said i and he had never been to india before this was his first and only visit to this country on which he was given this great task of partitioning our beautiful country into three parts i mean of course two of them belong to pakistan it was absurd that uh, you know that this kind of division could have taken place so what happened was that when it was going to be i'll just tell you very briefly about why we set up the partition museum wherever you go in the world where people have suffered where their history and heritage has been looted and has been totally you know uh, uh, vandalized people have tried to remember that moment and commemorate it so that it never happens again is tarah ki cheez dobara hamare itihas mein nahi honi chahiye i mean this is what we all pray for and hope for so you have many museums for example dedicated to the holocaust aap jahan bhi jayenge in europe you will find a holocaust museum because the jews have decided no one should forget the way they were persecuted so we took our inspiration from there and we decided that you know the way what happened in this country we must memorialize it we must remember it we should not allow ourselves to forget this moment and so when it is going to be the 70 years of india's independence and partition uh, which took place in um, 2017 we decided we were going to open a museum but i have to tell you uh, the Uh, the strange part of it hum kehte hain na koi ek karmic connection hota hai ya when you decide to do something the the heavens conspire for it to happen for you we took this decision when i say we there was just me and a small group of people who got together and we said we must do this in 2015 we had only 2 years and we said pura museum hame banana hai kahan banana hai kisi ko nahi pata tha kaise banana hai kisi ko nahi pata tha paise kahan se aayenge kisi ko nahi pata tha so we just set up a trust we said chalo trust banate hain uske baad dekhi jayegi so we set up a trust and we did ओपन कॉन्वर्सेशन um, जैसे कि आज आप लोग बैठे हैं आपके साथ हम बैठ के बात कर रहे हैं इस तरह का म्यूजियम बनना चाहिए कि नहीं वी गॉट सच अ ओवरवेलमिंग रिस्पॉन्स नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम द एल्डरली हु हैड बीन थ्रू द पार्टिशन बट फ्रॉम यंग पीपल हु केम फॉरवर्ड एंड सेड वी वॉन्ट टू वॉलंटियर फॉर दिस वी वॉन्ट दिस टू टेक प्लेस सो द पंजाब गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो सेट केम फॉरवर्ड एट दैट टाइम मिस्टर बादल वॉज द चीफ मिनिस्टर आई वेंट टू हेम एंड आई सेट प्लीज कैन यू help us we would like because i thought delhi would be too expensive yahan to jagah nahi milegi and besides we want to do it either in bengal or in um, uh, punjab maybe amritsar so he i asked him can you help us and he said bibi to see nahi karoge to aise kar lange maine if you don't do it we will set up the partition museum so that happened just two years ago uh, now it's going to be the third year of the partition museum please do visit it we have thousands of oral histories playing there it is a people's museum we decided hum leaders ke bare mein ye museum nahi bana rahe hum logon ke bare mein bana rahe hain unhone unke upar kya kya beeti aur wo aap beeti apni stories khud batate hain unhone apne jo cheeze wo leke aaye the at the time of partition wo cheeze unhone dali hain both from punjab as well as bengal i even assam which is also partitioned so we have all those 
those things lying in the museum and i do hope that one day uh, jo aap log nahi gaye hain aap zarur jana aur museum ko dekhe ab to hazaron ki tadad mein log aate hain and it has been named as after the golden temple this is the most visited place in amritsar and uh, the national geographic has said that this is the fifth most uh, uh, the the best place that you can visit in india for which we are very grateful and the museum has also won five awards par humne sirf ye history aur heritage preserve karne ke liye kiya hai aap zarur do join in the journey thank you thank you so much kishwar ji that was very inspiring i hope you get a chance to visit this museum congratulations for your wonderful work in fact i was just thinking about the radcliffe line which was drawn in shimla you know on the premises or nearby where i myself live and work these days at the indian institute of advanced study which used to be the viceregal lodge and uh, many such blood soaked lines aisi lakire jo rakt se unmaat hai usi jagah khinchi gayi ek to radcliffe line hai dusra macman line hai between india and tibet or china and the duran line but uh, i was also thinking i've written about this a little bit uh, in a book that uh, came out a couple of years ago called the death and after life of mahatma gandhi where i was wondering if the nation can recover from the twin traumas at its birth the birth pangs of india as it were which was of course the partition and very linked to it in a very peculiar way uh, uh, you know gandhi's death but i want to now go over to professor mukherjee uh, sharadindo mukherjee sahab who will talk about the other side of partition the bengal side you know which we don't talk about or know about that much sir uh, can you please tell us uh, uh, you know the terrible history you know an un- unwritten unspoken history you might say compared to punjab of that trauma yeah thanks uh, makran ji uh before uh, i take up uh, the specific case of bengal i go back to the roots of the idea of partition uh, that is very important i'll go back to the roots of the idea of partition because uh, these days once again this partition the cause of partition is being raked up almost every day and that is because of the orchestrated campaign against the ca and this act as you all know is intended to give citizenship right to the persecuted uh, hindu sikhs christians parsis jains from pakistan and bangladesh uh, afghanistan also but i will keep my story confined to pakistan and bangladesh now why now you see another aspect is this savarkar veer savarkar is often dragged into this debate as this man was responsible is such an absurd theory and they will cite that savarka wrote hindutva idea of hindutva in 1923 amplified further after few years and he is the man even once in a while i have heard people uh, talking about shah wasat mukherji as a man responsible partition but this all bunkum this all nonsense is a no basis to it now when we study history of partition we must go back to the roots of partition that was what that was certain people a large number of people of india they refused to live with the hindus so this idea of separatism when do i go back we go back to the arab invasion of sindh 7th century it is the arab invaders who brought this idea of what momin and kafir the concept of uh, darul harb darul islam and the concept of jahiliya and jihad it is this now what does it lead to it leads to demography transformation in various parts of india certain parts of india they got transformed where the minorities hindus become the minorities this happened in whole, whole of what is now west pakistan this happened in bengal also now uh, i will refer back to uh, kishwar ji's comment about lahore that how lahore was known as the paris of the east actually lahore came almost close to calcutta or pune in terms of its cultural attainments and political contribution and keeping this mind since i am a student of history of partition uh, we commissioned a project special project suppose the most prestigious project in icihr were attached to these days and that was on the 
Lahore, the title of the thesis was the demography and politics. At Lahore, we studied Lahore and Khulna. And we showed how Lahore, which gave to us what? Lala Lashwat Rai, Bhagat Singh, where revolutionary Jatindas died fasting, and which was a very, very important center of freedom movement that had 35% Hindu and Sikh population. Now, you hardly find even 1% of Hindu and Sikh population there. What happened to that? So that was a starting point. But the key to this history is demography and politics. Wherever the demography changed, it changed, put it very simply, let us be honest with facts. Wherever the Muslim become majority, Hindu stand minority, there's a problem. And this is what was realized by the Muslim leaders all throughout the time, you know. They always wanted what is going to happen to the Muslim minority provinces, you know. Hindu leaders never talked about what is going to happen to Hindus who will be left in the Muslim majority provinces. That's one point. Now, when people, I'm not a Nehruvian, I have written all my life against Nehru and Congress, but people sometimes, like Jashwan Singh, he did a book and he blamed a partition on Nehru's folly. Nehru refused to accept the cabinet mission plan. Even that is nonsense. You see, the basic idea is that the Muslims, exceptions apart, they are told by the leaders consistently that you are different from Hindus. You can't live together. As Jinnah famously put it, that we don't intermix. Your heroes are enemies. Your enemies are our hero. We don't interdine. We don't intermarry. So we are two different nations. We can't live together. Now, this idea suddenly did come to Jinnah all of a sudden. This idea was, say, encouraged in action by all the Muslim leaders of India. And this went on, increasing. So what happened? Large parts of India, Hindus, and later on Sikhs became, became minority. And these became what? The uh, uh, cornerstone of what became Pakistan after 1947. Now this idea, look, look aside. Once in a while, there will be Darashiko or some such figures. But all of them, they were parties and Muslim leaders. And this idea was taken up by the Wahhabis and the Farais in the 19th century done by Sir Syed Ahmad. Very unfortunately, uh, Sir Syed Ahmad is being projected as a maker of modern India by a historian who still controls our NCD textbooks, who is also a famous cricket historian, you know, like that. Where Subhas Bose is not a historian of modern India, Sadat Patel is not, but Sir Syed Ahmad Jinnah are, you know. So that's the problem. Now, this is a problem, you know, so 1940s onward, Muslim leaders were very honest. They said, we want exchange of population. We can't live together, right or wrong. But probably they are right. And this is what Hindu Mahasabha, you may call it communal, rank communalist, but Hindu Mahasabha, right from the first session, they said Hindus are falling in number and they faced danger, which our leadership didn't bother to uh, take care of. So what happened? What happened, you know, 1930s, 1940 law resolution, these are part of a cumulative process that was going on. And Savarkar was just responding to a reality. Savarkar was a straightforward man. He had studied history, and he had written also in 1857 as an effort by the Hindus and Muslims. Probably was wrong, but when he had to spend 10 years in jail in Andaman, then he realized what it means to a Hindu and how they are treated by Muslim inmates. You know, so this is the problem that uh, Congress, unfortunately, they went on surrendering every demand put forward by Muslim League, beginning with the. Uh, Mollemento reform 1999, then the Congress Lucknow Muslim uh, Congress Muslim League Pact Lucknow 1916. Everywhere, the 1921. This is the hundreds of Khilafat. Our leadership did a big blunder. They encouraged the Khilafat movement with the horrific results of thousands of Hindus who were killed and converted in Kerala, called the Mopla Rebellion. Now, these things are not taught in our history books, so how would you know? So it is easy to blame Savarkar. Ye Hindu to isko gali do, isko bol do. Bhai, Savarkar thai nahi. Savarkar was reacting to a scenario. He had the honesty, he had the knowledge to react, so he said that, you know. This is the thing. Now, uh, one more time? Or some, some more time? Okay. Now, this is the background to what happened in 47. You see, once you accept that some people have a right to spread their ideas of hatred, I again say, I don't blame the entire community, but the oh, dominant leadership of the Muslims who are like that. Once in a while, there will be Kaji Najibul Islam or somebody like that who will say, we are one people. Actually, there is no, no difference. But this was not accepted by most of the Muslims of India, unfortunately. And this is what led to the partition. So please, go back to the sources. 
go back to the events of history and then draw your conclusion. Don't go by what the Sarkari textbook, NCRT textbooks, or the television cameraman tells you. Don't go by that. You know. So then you know the history. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mukherjee. Uh, as, as you see, friends, he has taken the idea of Pakistan way back before even the two-nation theory of Jinnah to actually the invasion of Sindh, the invasion of Makran, in fact, uh, way back to about 30, 40 years after the Prophet's death. Now, the question really is that if behind partition is a very old mentality, a very old mindset and way of thinking, then what hope is there? What future do we have? Or are we condemned to undergo a process of endless partition, whether you want to call it an agitation over CAA, NRC, Shaheen Bagh sprouting everywhere? And this idea of difference and, you know, the refusal to live together cropping up over and over again. Meenakshi ji, what is your view on this mentality uh, that we just heard about behind the idea of partition? Uh, thank you. You've raised a very important point that we are still grappling with partition and partition and partition. The story of partition did not end in 1947. We saw it enacted again in Kashmir. We are seeing it enacted in parts of Assam and in so many other places. I don't uh, think I can better what my uh, previous panelists have said, but there is just one point that I would like to draw your attention to. As long as the Indian polity was in the hands of Arabs, Turks, Mughals, there was no problem about their thinking on India. They were sure that they are ruling India and they will be masters of India uh, forever. The problem, according to me, began in the 18th century when the Mughal Empire went into decline. The thought that Muslims of India could now be subjects of a non-Muslim polity was what triggered off a lot of thinking among the Muslim intelligentsia. And they were so uh, alarmed at the prospect that they could be deprived of political power in India that in the 18th century, that is when, according to me, this partition mentality that I call gripped large sections of the Muslim intelligentsia. And the first person that we should remember is Shah Wali Ullah. He was a leading ulema of Delhi and he was alarmed at the prospect of the rise of Maratha, Sikh and other Hindu powers. So you will not believe it, but to prevent or to thwart this assertion, reassertion of Hindus, he actually invited the Afghan ruler Ahmad Shah Abdali. He said, please come to India because if you don't come and, and stop these And we are coming to you live from the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi where there's a panel so discussion on the pain of partition at the Art Cultural Festival that is currently underway. We cannot allow political power to...